Hello, Chris Kiek here with Kiek Technology Solutions. And in this video today, I'm going to explain how do you know which part in Tecla that bolts are going to be associated with, especially when you're running reports or you're showing bolts in your bill of materials on your shop drawings. Now, this is particularly tricky sometimes when it comes to field bolts. On shop bolts or workshop bolts, those are gonna always show up on the assembly because the two parts involved are shop bolted together. So both of those are showing up on the same assembly or the same drawing. Now, when field bolts uh, are in play here, it gets a little bit tricky because you're trying to figure out which part is Tecla going to output those bolts with. And what we'll do is we'll demonstrate this by coming in here and we'll bolt these two plates to this beam. So we'll go to the steel menu and then we'll go to the bolt command and then when we activate that here at the lower left hand corner, Tecla tells us to select the main part to which the secondary parts will be bolted. Now, this is all about how are you going to interpret this from an input point of view. Now, really, you can ignore that and I want you to instead think about which part do you want the field bolts to be built out with. Now, when we go ahead and click on the beam, and then let's say that we click on this shim plate second and then the flange plate third, that might be our natural instinct to do this. Now, when we're all done, we'll middle mouse button and then we'll pick two points to place our bolts. I'll right click, interrupt, and here we can see that the bolt type is set to sight, which means that these are fuel bolts. Now, how do I find out which one of these parts that the bolts are associated to? Well, let me go ahead and run numbering real quick. So I'll say numbering modified. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually select on the beam object because to me, that's going to be the most logical object that I would think that these bolts are going to output with. Well, let's see if that happens. We'll go to reports. We're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna find this 350 bolt list. Now you'll see that there's a couple different reports. There's bolt list and then there's bolt list for selected bolts. Well, why is there a different one? Well, the 350 bolt list the way that this works is that it outputs the bolts for the selected parts or assemblies that you have in the model and whichever bolts are associated to those. All right, so if I select on the beam here, then I say create from selected, notice that none of the bolts will appear here. Okay, so why are none of the bolts showing up? Let's try this second part here. So this was the second piece that I picked, the shim plate. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this run the report, and now I have six bolts shown here, including the nuts and the washers. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and click on the third plate. We'll go ahead and select on this, run the report, and again, nothing is shown here. The reason this happened is because the second part that you pick when you put in a bolt is going to be the yellow part, and it means it's the part in which the bolts will bill out with with the Tecla template editor, which includes reports as well as on your shop drawings. So how can I check this? Well, I can click on the bolt. I right click and say inquire. When I do this, you'll see that it says three parts have been included in this bolt group, but the orange part is the first part that I picked. The yellow part is the second part that I picked. And then optionally, if I have a third part or fourth or more parts picked for the bolt group, those are just considered additional secondaries but the most important piece here is the second part that I picked. Now, if you don't want those bolts to be built out that way, and you actually wanna change that, you have to select on the existing bolt, right click and choose bolt parts. Now what I can do is let's say that I want the bolts to be with the beam. Well, in this case, I can pick on the shim plate first, then I can pick on the beam second, and then I can pick on the flange plate third and middle mouse button. Now when I do that, you'll see that it doesn't look like anything's really changed on the bolts. However, when I select on the beam now and select on this bolt list and say create from selected, you'll see that the bolts now bill out with the beam and they will not bill out with this shim plate. So let's go ahead and say create from selected here. Now notice no uh, bolts for the cyan shim plate and no bolts for the flange plate. So really the key here to understanding how bolts will output and bill out in reports and on drawings is by making sure that you know which part is the yellow or the second part picked in that bulk group. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the template editor and just explain how 350 bolt list is working and why it's only showing the bolts with certain parts and not others. Okay, so now I'm here in the Tecla template editor 
and I have the 350 bolt list report open. And if we go to the tree view here on the left, we're gonna see that there's a top level row that is an assembly row. If I double click on this, we'll see that the content type is assembly. And basically what this means is that if I had selected assemblies in the model and I ran this report, it's gonna give me the bolts on that assembly. However, we can't have bolts directly underneath the assembly row. We actually have to get the bolts associated with parts that are on that assembly. So there's a child row here that is a part row and we can see the content type here. Now, underneath that, there are three additional sub rows, one for shot bolts, one for fuel bolts, and one for the total quantity of both bolts put together. Now, the reason why this is underneath this is again, in the template editor, bolts will be associated to parts if you make them a child or sub row of those parts. I can't have this shop or field or total bolts underneath the assembly because bolts in the template editor are associated to a part or they just output by themselves. So this is pretty important to understand. What's great about this is that whether I have the bolt selected, part or assembly selected in the model, it's going to give me the output bolts associated with those parts, that assembly, or the individual bolts themselves. Now, here we can see, for instance, in this shot bolt row, that the content type is bolts, and that's what it's outputting. And it just has a rule in here that's reading the report property of whether it's workshop or site, to determine whether or not it's gonna output shop or fuel bolts. So that explains how this works. Let me go ahead and go over to the other bolt report here. So let's go to the bolt report here that is bolt list for selected bolts. This report looks fairly similar, except the big difference here is that there is no parent assembly or part row. So what this depends on is that you must have the actual bolt group itself selected in the model. And that's why it's different than the 350 bolt list. So in here, the parent level row is just bolt. So watch this, let me explain what I mean by this. If I actually go back into the model, we'll close these reports down, we'll go back into the model itself, and if I actually just click on any of these three parts, in fact, I'll hold down control and I'll select on all three of the parts, so that way all three are selected, I'll go to my reports menu and I'll do bolt list for selected bolts. When I run this, none of the bolts are actually shown because there's no parent part rows to actually output this for. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pick, pick on the bolt. I'll run that report again. And now you see that the bolts output because I selected bolt objects and those are the content type that are in the actual report. However, if I select on just the bolts and then I select back on the 350 bolt list and I say create from selected, this is going to give me the reported bolt count because it will find either the parent part or the parent assembly that those bolts are on. Now, if I then select on assemblies down here, let's change our selection here. We'll select the entire assembly and I'm just gonna go ahead and say create from selected. And this also gives me the bolts because the bolts are associated to that beam, which that beam is a part on that assembly. If I then switch my selection back to parts, which is what most of us have when we're modeling and when we're running reports and exports. Well, now if I pick on the beam part object, that also is gonna give me the bolts. However, if I click on the individual plates here, these two uh, flange plates and say create from selected, these are not going to output the bolts because the bolts are yellow and associated to the beam. So let's go ahead and inquire one more time. And again, because that was my second part picked in the bolt group and it turns yellow, that's the part in which the bolts are going to output with and are associated to in the template editor. Okay, now let's talk about where people usually get in trouble with this. Well, I went back on this bolt here and I actually modified them back to how I originally had it. So if I right click here and say bolt parts, I changed it so that way the beam turns orange, which is the first part picked in the bolt group. Then the uh, shim plate is yellow, which is the second part. And then the subsequent parts will just be whatever their default class color is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and interrupt there. Now, what happens is oftentimes when people are running their submittals, they'll go up here to the document manager and they'll select all their beam and column drawings and all the drawings that they're releasing for fabrication. Well, sometimes they may not make a shim plate drawing or and they just run a report of that or they forget to make the drawing of that. And so what'll happen here is people will select all of the parts and assemblies in the model based on those selected drawings that they're releasing for fabrication.
Well, the problem comes into play here is that now you'll see that the black existing column isn't highlighted. The Joyce and Joyce girders aren't highlighted. That's actually good. But here, the shim plate is not highlighted. Well, that's going to be a problem because the bolts are associated to that shim plate. So if I came in here and ran reports and went into 350 bolt list and ran this report, I'm not going to catch this unless I check the counts here that there are bolts actually missing from the list. And this could be a problem if you manually modeled some connections or you don't know exactly which pieces in the model that your bolts are associated to. So watch this. Again, if I go back and I click on that yellow part in the bolt group or the second part picked and say create from selected, then here it shows those bolts. Now, this is really important for you to understand so that way you don't have inaccurate quantities when you're running your reports for fabrication. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through some of the uh, other scenarios that you commonly have to face and make sure that your bolts are associated to the right parts. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in over here to this existing column. If I double click on this, we'll see that I've set the user defined attribute to existing. Now, that's what makes it turn this sort of uh, dark color here. Now, in the actual component itself, if I go to that shear tab component, this is actually going to be field welded to that existing column. So how did I do that? I went into the welds button here and on weld number five, the shear tab to the primary, I set this to field welded. Okay, well, I'm also going to field bolt this. So if I look at those field bolts there, basically what I need to do is I'm gonna change my selection to objects and components and I'm gonna see which of these two parts are these field bolts associated to. If I say inquire, we're gonna see that the orange part or the first part picked in this bolt group is the shear tab. The second part is going to be the beam and that turns yellow, which basically means that if I ran a report right now, the bolts are going to output with the yellow part or the beam object. So this is really important again for you to understand. So this is a great way for you to go through and check what the existing system components do. And again, the trend typically is that it will associate the bolts to the supported member, which is oftentimes going to be the supported beam, like you see here with this extended shear tab. Now, here we have uh, two shop welded clips that are attached to this beam and then field uh, bolts between those clips to the column. Well, what's going on here? If we inquire on this, we'll see that the clip turns yellow and the column turns orange. Well, that means that the bolts are gonna be associated to the clip. And since this clip is shop welded or attached to this beam, that means that the bolts in the bolt list are going to output with this beam. So let me run that report and show you how that works. If I select on the reports, we'll then go to 350 bolt list here. And again, I have the beam object selected, which does not have these bolts associated to it in any way. If I come back here and say inquire, the bolts are associated between the clip and the column. But again, because the clip is shop attached to this beam assembly, if I click on this and say run the report, due to the nature of the assembly, then the part sub row and then the bolt sub rows underneath that in the bolt list in the template editor, that's how it knows that even though I've selected this beam, which is not associated to these bolts in any way, is outputting this in the report because this clip angle is shop attached to that beam and these bolts are attached to this part underneath the hood in the template editor. So hopefully that makes sense, but these were designed intentionally. So that way, no matter how you select, as long as you're selecting one of the parts on the assemblies that the bolts should be associated to, you're gonna get those output. Over here on joist, there's actually some cases where I don't want these joist to joist bolts to output. So if I inquire on this, then we can see that this is associated to that yellow part, which is that joist girder. Now, again, I'm not usually going to select my joist girders to run my reports from, and that's why I probably wouldn't get these bolts output. Now, these bolts here in my structural column, oftentimes I hear that detailers are required to provide these. Well, let's inquire on this and see what the connection did. Well, it made for these bolts, the cap plate, which is shop attached to the HSS column, it made those the yellow part. That's the part in which the bolts are associated to. So if I click on the column here, I go back to report and I go back to my 350 bolt list and say create from selected, 
notice here that I get those four bolts, okay? Those four bolts are appearing because this yellow cap plate, which these bolts are associated to, is shop attached to that column. And that's how that 350 bolt list is designed. So this is really important. Once you understand which of the parts that your bolts are associated to, you're going to see how the bolts will output in your reports and make sure that you get the correct counts. The last thing we'll showcase here is I'm gonna go ahead and color the model by phases or by sequence. So here underneath the object representation, I'll say color by phase and I'll press modify. Now I have two sequences. The gray is phase or sequence one, the red is sequence two. Now here I have this beam is over in sequence or phase two. So you have to be really careful which of these uh, sequences are these bolts gonna be associated to. Well, because these fuel bolts are associated to those clips, which is on that beam, then really if I ran a report based on my selection of parts that are in phase or sequence two, then the bolt should go out with the sequence two or phase two objects. So again, this is also something that's important to understand. If you do a view filter and then you just window around all the bolts and you run that 350 uh, bolt list here for just all the bolts that you had selected, well then those bolts will go across into phase or sequence one. So this is something to important to understand the difference between this 350 bolt list and how it's reading from selected parts, bolts, or assemblies. And this one here is just purely based on selected bolts in the model. And how you do your view and selection filtering will impact how you're going to output reports. And I bring up this specific example about filtering by sequence or phase because I hear this from erectors all the time. They want to separate a report that gives them the bolts and the quantities by sequence or phase on the job. And then detailers will do filtering and try to run reports this way. So if you understand exactly what's going on and how to do your selection filters and your view filters, then you can make sure that bolts will go out with the right objects. Okay, so let's finish up with showing how to show the field bolts on a particular shop drawing. What we'll do is in the US environment underneath the project properties here in the Tecla menu, scroll down, there is user defined attributes at the very bottom. When we go inside of there, that is going to open up uh, a few different tab pages, which allows us to control different drawing switches. So we'll go to drawing switches here. Uh, okay, it looks like it's on the more drawing switches. And there's this option that says, uh, show field bolts on the drawings, either included in the bill of material or freestanding. I'm going to do freestanding just because then it pops out and it's easy for us to see. But we'll just go ahead and say modify here, apply and OK. And then now if I go into my document manager, I'm going to select on these three parts and I'm going to filter the document manager based on those three assemblies. So we have B5, which is the beam, M3 and M4. Well, let me go ahead and open up B5 and here we can see the holes for those bolts. And when we look at the chart, there's no bolt shown. All right, let's go to M3. Well, here we go. This looks like this is the shim plate. So that was the second part picked in our bolt group. And there they are, there's the bolts. Let's go to M4, which is the thicker flange plate and there are no bolts. So it shows you how the template editor for bolt reports as well as any templates that you're showing uh, in your bill of materials and uh, on your title blocks on your drawings, they behave the same way. Whenever you have bolts and you're outputting them associated to a specific part, those bolts can only live on one of the parts that are involved in the bolt group, and it's that second part that's picked or the yellow part.